Hi, my name is Esty Asher, and I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist and health educator for BJC School Outreach and Youth Development. I travel to classrooms and talk to students about making healthy choices, specifically about nutrition and physical activity. Have you ever wished that you had a useful, easy to use tool to help you determine what foods to put on your plate? Well, in 2011, thanks to the United States Department of Agriculture, we do. In 2011, the USDA put out something called MyPlate. MyPlate is a visual tool that was created in order to help Americans choose healthy foods for their meals and snacks. MyPlate came after MyPyramid, which had been around since 1992. Similar to my pyramid, my plate includes the different food groups that are essential at building a healthy, balanced diet. Also similar to my pyramid, the different food groups that are in my plate are represented by different colors. The different color scheme helps remind us the importance of building a healthy plate that's also colorful. The different colors not only make our foods more visually appealing, but they also correspond to different vitamins and minerals found in our food. So if you have a colorful plate, rest assured you will have a variety of vitamins and minerals as well. There are a few differences between my pyramid and my plate that I would like to point out. First, with my plate, there are five food groups instead of six. Fats and oils are no longer considered to be a food group. That's not because our body doesn't need them, but rather because it has been determined that as Americans, we eat more than enough of the fats and oils in our diet. They're naturally found in many foods, and oftentimes the cooking process that we use include fats and oils already. A second change that they made to my plate was the group that was formerly called beans and meat is now called protein. And lastly, the milk group is now called dairy. So now what I want to do is talk about each of the different food groups, point out the primary function that they have on our body, and give a few examples of each of those food groups. It's really important for us to notice that each of the food groups does execute a different function in our bodies. So it's really important for us to include all of those food groups as a result. First, we have the fruit group. The fruit group contains vitamins, minerals, and fiber. Specifically, the fruit group helps with our immune system. So it helps our body fight disease and it also helps maintain healthy skin. There's also fiber in our fruit group, which will help our digestive tract, so keep our digestion good and healthy, and it will also help with our heart, so our circulatory system. Examples I have here, um, we have an apple, we have some pineapple, um, we also have some grapefruit and raisins. Um, dried fruit, like raisins, are examples of fruit within the fruit group as well. Next, we have the vegetable group. The vegetable group, just like the fruit group, contains vitamins, minerals, and fiber. Specifically, the vegetable group helps with our vision, um, so it's really important that we want to get those vegetables in. Different vegetables that I have here are the squash, peppers, broccoli, and carrots. Next, we have the grains group. The grains group has fiber as well, but it is also really important for giving our bodies energy. That energy is not only helpful for us to move around and be physically active, but as I point out to my students, it really helps give energy to our brain as well. So it will help us focus better, think better, 
and study so that we can also have a better academic performance. So examples of grains are some pasta, we have some cereal, um, some rice, and some bread. Next, we have the protein group. The protein group is really important for helping build our muscle tissue. All tissues in our bodies um, are helped by the protein group, but specifically we talk about muscle tissue with protein. Protein can be found in both animal and plant-based sources. Animal sources include meat, like in this burger, um, also some chicken or fish, or eggs. Plant sources include nuts, like these almonds, peanut butter, um, seeds, and those are different plant sources of protein. So if somebody does not eat animal sources, they can meet their protein needs from plant sources exclusively. The last group that we have is the dairy group. The dairy group is made primarily of milk, yogurt, and cheese. If somebody chooses not to have cow's milk or products from animals, we can also use soy milk or almond milk. What makes the dairy group so important is the fact that there is calcium in the dairy group. While milk alternatives such as um, soy milk and almond milk don't naturally have calcium, the companies have added calcium to make sure that you can get the appropriate amount of calcium from these type of dairy um, milk products. So that is the last of the five food groups that are found on my plate. Um, I hope the next time that you're choosing the foods on your plate, you think of my plate. For more information, visit choosemyplate.gov or bjcschooloutreach.org. Thank you. Thank you.